how to use a golf phrase, there are no more mulligans. If you hit into the woods, it's a double bogey at this point. Win, you move on. Lose, you go home. It's OEV Playoff Friday presented by Pilot Company. And a great matchup tonight in 6A as the 7-3 Jefferson County Patriots. They've made their way up I-40, Kingston Pike, Campbell Station over to Farragut to take on the 8 and to Admirals. This is a different Patriot team than we saw in week one in a 7-6 rock fight loss to Sevier County. Yeah, I mean, you were getting so descriptive there with uh, where we were. I thought you were getting ready to say, right across from Rick Terry, (laughs) Jory is on, right beside the fresh market, and keep going. Um, I like that, by the way. Hey, you know, it is. Checks in the mail, yeah. Correct. Um, (laughs) Let's take a look at tonight's key players for this football game. We'll start with the visitors from Jefferson County. We're going to talk about both quarterbacks. First, Isaiah Hall. He's gotten better as the years went along. He's playing his best football right now, almost 2,000 yards passing, 22 touchdowns on the year. Flip it to the other side. We're going to talk about Luke Johnson for the Farragut Admirals. Same as Hall, almost 2,000 yards on the year, 22 touchdowns. It's it's very eerily similar. We talked about that in the pregame show. He's steady Eddie. They, They just... They don't ask him to do a ton, but what they do ask him to do, he is really, really good at. And, and again, he's a nice yin to the yang when they're not handing it off to Elijah Gibbs. Let's head down to the third member of our team, Eric Kane, standing by with Eddie Courtney. It's a new season, Coach. How's the week of preparation been now knowing that it's do or, uh, do or go home? Oh, big big week of practice. Our kids understand what it means to be in the playoffs, and, and you have to take it each game at a time, and you get focused on that one opponent, a good Jefferson County football team. I think we're going to execute well. We've got to play good defense. They've got a good offensive quarterback. Those have all real well in the running game. So, and special teams, I think, will be key tonight. We've worked hard on that also. You mentioned Hall, a quarterback, but Mills, a running back, a big guy that likes to run hard. What, what's your defense need to do to kind of corral him? Well, we've talked about everybody just doing their job. Don't overplay anything, just your responsibility so you won't get anything trickled on you where they run outside, run inside, trap, whatever they do, or throw deep or throw play action pass, whatever they do. It's all about a play, playing with your unit, playing in conceit. Coach, thanks so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. First quarter is brought to you by OEB Law. Turn your wreck into a check with OEB. Spencer Riley, the head coach on the other side of the field on a gorgeous East Tennessee night. Can you believe almost 70 degrees to start the playoffs in November? It's unbelievable. I mean, like the whole week has been just beautiful. I mean, in the lower 70s most of the week and, you know, feel like you you know it's it's late september early october not early november well i said on wblt you know the we saw jefferson county for the the last time we saw them was to open the season against severe county and the weather's not much different now than it was then (laughs) (laughs) so true i mean you know because we kind of those are in middle august we kind of had some cooler days Yeah, this Jefferson County team, 7-3. and three. They'll travel over to face Farragut, 8-2. and two. And as we've talked about it, you know, first-round matchups are just tough, you know, to find really good ones. But Spencer Riley says the biggest difference between the Jefferson County team that is here tonight versus the one that opened the season is the offensive line. Well, yeah, and again, with him coaching them, you would accept, expect development, right? Sure, yeah. You know, former offensive lineman at the University of Tennessee. And so, you know, it's going to be impressive to kind of see how they look in person compared to how they looked early in the year. Because you go back to that Sevier County game, they got whipped up front. And it's a big reason they only scored six points in that, that football game. Farragut won the toss. They have elected to receive. And here we go. The road to Chattanooga is officially off and rolling with a kickoff out of bounds. I mean, Farragut's going to get great field position to start. Bounds. It's a kicking team. Ball will place the 35-yard line. First down. Officials out of Chattanooga tonight. Yeah, in the playoffs, they do change things around. None of the, uh, the officials that you see on a regular basis. Luke Johnson, the quarterback. What if his dad's here tonight? He is. is Bill, he? Bill Ray's not missed a game, man. He's not missed a game all year. He'll hop a... He'll either drive down uh, part of the way tonight, which is what I'll do, and then finish awesome. off tomorrow, or he'll, he'll hop, hop a plane with the donor and, you know, be there. It's a little easier here in November no, the longer fair get goes. Nice one-handed snag by Luke. Easy play, easy pitch and catch, and, a, and an easy seven yards. 
The Rivalry Thursday starting lineups brought to you by Old Ben Franklin Motors. Well, if there's one thing you can count on for Farragut, it's always strong offensive line play, uh, and they've got that again. They do, and, and you know, you've got three juniors on that offensive line. That means they'll all be maybe 60% of your offensive line will be back a year from now. Seven yards on first down. Uh, we talk about Luke Johnson's dad, and we didn't really explain it fully. His father is what the director of football operations uh, for Josh Heupel. And nice job for Jefferson County getting in the backfield. Dawson Emmons, four linebackers in that 3-4. Spencer Riley talking about if there's a, a best unit on his team, he would start with the linebacker position. All four linebackers over 100 tackles on the season. You know, and this is what Jeff County wants to get Farragut in third and plus five. Yeah, loss of four yards. Johnson looking to throw, and this one to the sideline falls incomplete. And a nice start for the Patriots, a three and out on defense, and they'll force an admiral punt. So a nice start for the Jeff County defense. Able to get off the field. It's a nice throw. Just really nice defense. Nice job by number eight for Jeff County, that being Zach McGough. D for the Patriots, Blake Overton. Good snap. And Keeney will punt this one away. How about that punt? Fair catch is asked for and is granted back at the 20. Our first chance tonight to see the quarterback, Isaiah Hall. Here's a guy a week ago, and granted, it was against Westridge, and Austin and I could probably hook up for a couple touchdowns ourselves against Westridge, but in the first half, Hall's stat line was impressive. Nine for nine, over 250 yards, and four touchdowns in the first half. Yes, they, they, they dismantled Westridge, but as you pointed out, most everyone dismantled Westridge this year. 42 yards on the punt. As Spencer Riley will tell you, the key to this team and why they're better is because of that right there. Amari and Mills behind an offensive line that when we saw them to start the season, they only had one returning starter. Now, all of a sudden, they've got all these guys. It was, it was Grom in 58. Now, they've got all these guys that have got 10 starts under their belt. Well, you know, Overton's a senior. They've got one or two seniors on the offensive line. That's it. Everybody else is a junior, sophomore, freshman. 10 yards and a first down on first down. They'll go back to the ground. And nice running by Mills. This defense for Farragut, we were awfully impressed. Uh, Jack Alley had a great game a week ago. They played well in the secondary in the 28-21 win at Bearden. Two, two really impressive runs for this Jeff County offense to open things up. And if they can run it, all of a sudden that makes Farragut have to creep up in the box, yep. which allows Hall to really go to work. Yeah, he is... Uh, He's got a cannon on his shoulder. They'll go back to the ground and into the secondary. And so far, Eric Kane, this Jefferson County offense is doing just what Spencer Riley, a former offensive lineman at Tennessee, would hope for. Yeah, exactly. And running behind that offensive line, you guys mentioned the youth there. When we were at Sevier County week one, Nick Moore, sophomore, was not starting at left tackle. Christian Wilson, the freshman, was not starting at right tackle. These guys have grown up in a hurry. That's awesome, Eric. <laughs> at Farragut, no less. <laughs> I'll tell the story after this bull rush. Hall will get it away, and it's going to be incomplete. Okay, hang on. Let me set this up. All the way back to when we started Rivalry Thursday, we had a, a, a number one versus number one matchup right here. It was Catholic at Farragut, our first year of Rivalry Thursday in 2009. Ended up being a good game. Oh, no, that wasn't that game. That was CSS. That was, was not it really CSS? Either. Yes, it was CSS. It was CSS. Comcast Sports Southeast. Yes, it was you and Todd Kelly. You were watching? No. I, I thought. I just saw the highlight too many times. Okay. Hall finds his man. 
Williamson, and he gets him to right around midfield. Okay, I, th I thought it was the because anyway, it was so, a CSS game. So let, let me tell the story. So, oh, okay, sorry. So years ago, and Mark, I was before Mark and I were, were really working together. He did the games on CSS, and uh, kid for Nick by the name of Nick Moore was a running back here at Farragut, and he was worth 37. The other running back was Andre Sterling. He wore 31. All right. And Andre was in the game and. He busts out like a 75-yard run down the sidelines, and Packer, the whole call, is yelling, Nick Moore into the clear, Nick Moore. <laughs> so it's always been this running joke for years, and so to be at Barry getting you to say Nick Moore's in the football game for Jeff County just is too great. Yeah, first third down, uh, and they'll sling it across the middle, overthrow the receiver, and it will bring up a fourth down for the Patriots right at midfield. You would anticipate Spencer Riley will punt this one away, and they're – are a lot of substitutions, so it looks like that's what they'll do. A nice job of flipping the field. And yeah. Play field position here. Now if they can get off a good punt, not allow Farragut to return it, pin them inside the 20, and at least it's, at worst you're making Farragut drive the length of the field on you. Good snap. Nice bounce. And the punt is away. And that punt was thrill a minute in more ways than one. And we'll get fair, get pretty good field position. Time now for the cheer dance spotlight brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. And uh, tonight that's over on the Farragut side as cheerleaders uh, down there. The senior cheer members of the team, Brooke Simpson, Mariah McDonald, Alex Kate Cole, Paris Weigel, Ella McCready, and Molly Wallace. Seniors on the dance team, or the uh, cheerleading team, excuse me. And we'll all share the one megaphone that we have here tonight. So second possession after a 20-yard punt uh, for Luke Johnson and Farragut. Girls, one of the assistant coaches. A good thing he did because Jeff County had it uh, defended pretty well. Emmett Newman was between he and his wide receiver. So Chad, he doesn't throw it wide. The CB45 was uh, more wide open than the receiver was on that play, holding the parabolic microphone. By the way, you can watch the games at RivalryThursday.com. Glad to see that uh, CB45 is wearing his blue, so he fits in on that Farragut sideline. Here's our first chance to see the nice running back for Farragut, the diminutive one, Elijah Gibbs, at 5'8", 165. Well, remember now, Gibbs last week didn't have a run over four yards until the one that finally put Bearden away, which was a 16-yarder. So, you know, he struggled to kind of get going last week. See, Chad fits right in over there. Got the blue on. Hoping we get good sound off of what's happening on the turf since the microphone is pointed straight down into the artificial turf. Third down, they'll look to throw. Catch is made. First down. Needed six yards, got eight, and that is the first first down of the night for the Admirals. Just kind of set down right there in the zone, and Luke put a little bit of extra mustard on that one, and the nice catch. Landis. Davila. He had a couple of nice catches last week against Farragut, or maybe against Bearden. First down and 10, they'll go back to the ground to the outside and just a couple of yards. And there's a part of that linebacker crew that we talked about, Emmett Newman, number 15. They're going to be tested tonight, not just in the running game for Farragut, but the RPO, Admirals like to play fake and throw quick passes. This 3-4 linebackers are going to be so key for Jeff County. Second down and nine. Johnson with some pressure. Oh, is this oh, that's a beautiful catch. Yeah, a catch is made on the sideline by Chance Van. <laughs> He went up and got that, got the one foot down, maybe even got two down. Watch this. Just kind of beautiful throw and one, two on an 18 yard gain to Van. First time Fair gets into Jefferson County territory on the night. Yeah, you talk about flipping the field. Patriots had an opportunity. The 20 yard punt didn't help, and just that quickly Fair get inside the 40. High snap. 
threw off the timing, and Luke Johnson will be buried back at the 49. Yeah, he, he kept rolling right into that. And, and keep in mind as Dallas Williamson comes home with the sack, keep in mind those high snaps. Now that's two. Yep. You know, and, and just mark it down for potentially later. Just the third sack of the year for Williamson. Well, the very first snap of the game after a 10 yard loss. I mean, you made the point. Best play was the one handed snag of yeah. the snap. Second down and 20. Johnson has some time. And there's a linebacker again. Emmett Newman one more time. Good pressure coming around the near side by Christian Wilson. And a third down and 20 for the Admirals at the 49 yard line. Gibbs up on uh, Granger 7 to nothing. McMinn County leads Campbell County 7 to nothing. And Bearden leads DB 7 to nothing. Oh, wow. My favorite tweet, Peggy Bratt, the trainer at Alcoa, tweeted 53 yard run by Jordan Harris. Jesse Smithy tweeted, Alcoa, Sharpie, moving on to round two. <laughs> and I would have tweeted, game winner. Third down and 20, Johnson throws into double coverage. Nice coverage, that one knocked away, and the Admirals will be forced to punt. That was really good coverage down the field. Uh, he kind of threw into double coverage. Landis is there, but so were two Patriots. Knocked away by five, Blake Overton. One of the couple of seniors on the defensive side of the ball. Reese Keeney, uh, Reese Keeney, the senior for Farragut, the semifinalist uh, for Mr. Football. Yeah, kicker. yeah, great kicker, great punter, second punt of the night. The first one turned over for Keeney. Good snap, and we'll punt this one a low bounding punt that will be caught at the 15 yard line. And we will take a quick break. No score yet here at Farragut. Patriots will get the football when we come back. There's a flag here. I think, I think he, he called waved, for the fair catch and then ran. Wave for a fair catch. What's that happened last week at Bearden? And... Go ahead and catch a break right here. No score in the first quarter. Kick. First down, timeout. Blue 2020 F-150, 41.990. Putt. Jake drops back. He's got a deal wide open. The crowd goes wild with savings. Whether you're looking for a low mileage pre-owned truck to tailgate in or a minivan to get the whole family to the game, the pre-owned patrol has what you're looking for. Only at Ted Russell Ford on Kingston Pike or Parkside Drive. Well, no score here early, about halfway through the first quarter. In Jefferson County and Farragut, 654 to go. So keep you updated as we always do with other games around the area once we get to the playoffs. Anderson County already up on Seymour, 14 to nothing. Sevier County up on Morristown West, 7 to nothing. Elizabeth up on Carter, 7 to nothing. We appreciate any monetary donations you can give to this final organization. The FTA is located at each of the ticket gates. Well, a good start for Spencer Riley and his team. Um, as you said early, just the opportunity to you know, stay in the game as the underdog, if you will. Uh, but now field position has been flipped again. Patriots will go back to the ground. Nice three-yard run. You know, again, moving the pile, finding ways to, you know, be positive. Don't go backwards. You can go back to Farragut on that last drive. They're moving it. They're moving. They're moving. It. They took the sack. All of a sudden, they're playing at second and twenty, and it vastly changed things. Second and seven here. By the way, I do love the, uh, the uniform combination for Jeff County. 
Yeah, I'd stay on the ground if I'm the Patriots back here. You, you, you had success there, and with that, they'll go to the air. And a great job from the linebacker position, Jack Alley. Sniffing that one out. Yep, loss of three back to the 10, and we're at third and 10 now. I, I don't mind that play call because, again, it's a high percentage pass. It's safe. It's safe. If it, if it works out great, that one obviously didn't. Loss of three yards will make it a third down and 10. Biggest thing here for Hall, just don't force anything. If nothing's there, throw it away, punt it, and you know, live to fight another day. They'll play fake, and Hall will throw this one across the middle. A shot taken on the receiver, but they'll let that one go. And a fourth down. Maryville up on Morristown East, 14 to nothing early. Elizabeth and up on Carter, 7 0. Now, in this situation right here, snap is key. Your punter's going to be in his own end zone. Especially after he just uh, kicked one 20 yards. You cannot afford another 20 yard punt and give the ball to the Farragut, give the ball to Farragut at your 30. Second punt of the night here for Jeff County. Jonathan Barron, the punter. Good snap. And a low. Watch this bounce. Boy, you could tell by the, the angle of the ball he was going to get a great bounce. We will take a full break. No score in the first quarter on OEB Law. Playoff Friday presented by Pilot. And I continue thanks to all of you in East Tennessee for your generous giving to Reeves Across America. We're at almost $15,000 raised through the initiative here with Rivalry Thursday. And go to knoxreads.org if you're at home. You can do it now. Click on the Rivalry Thursday link. Make that donation just to make sure that there are no gravestones of our veterans at Christmas that do not have a wreath on them at Christmas. Luke Johnson across the middle. And a quick pitch and catch for a first down. That to Landis Davila. Right now, Farragut really content just to kind of take uh, what Jeff Kenny's given them, but there is a flag, and this one will be coming back, holding against Farragut. Surprising score, if you will. Walker Valley up on Carnes, 14-0 early. Holding offense number 60, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Well, you watch the left side of your screen, and you'll probably see the hold right there. And he didn't need to do that for the pass to be complete. Yeah, it was on the back side. First penalty of the night. Johnson has some time. 
Catch is made here by Davila again. He'll break tackles and almost a first down. Another flag, though, back at the 35. Is this another hold? Or did he pick up the flag? Or was it just the yellow spot that you saw it well? No, it was a yellow flag on the field, and the referee went over, picked it up, put it back in his pocket. <laughs> it was not the yellow. Where was that we were at? Wham. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. There's another high snap, though. Look out here, though. There he, there he is. Nice run by Elijah Gibbs. Quicker than the hiccup. Yeah, he just kind of fit into that small hole and slid through and picked up the first down. Gibbs will be in the uh, Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase. One of the running backs for Knoxville. Colefield up early in their game, 14-0. Hand off to him again off left tackle. Look at the quick feet cutting back inside close to a first down. Nice job of that left side of that very good offensive line and a great job by Davila blocking down the field. And I think the best thing going is that, you know, if I'm fair, get. I know you'd rather get a first down, but I kind of like the second and half yard. This is a perfect time to take a shot. See if they do. Luke Johnson, the senior quarterback, and he will take a shot. Across the middle, receiver is there. Touchdown. Right on cue, Ashton Ocker, 35 yards on the touchdown, and it's Farragut that strikes first. Ocker in the slot, 10th touchdown catch of the year for number 10 and uh, plenty of time great job by the offensive line Luke steps into that one delivers a strike and Farragut strikes first you know I'll give you credit every once in a while you you say something smart that's all the time but <laughs> I mean I just again second and a half yard you know it's perfect time to throw it 14-0, Sevier County over Morristown West. That's a shot. Sevier County limping into the playoffs, having lost three in a row to Heritage, Campbell County, and Cock County. Yeah, this Ashton Auker, awfully good on special teams. He'll be playing in the East-West game. And uh, well, well deserving of that. Well, if you have a student that's getting ready for the ACT, it's going to be a big day on December the 10th. Not only the rivalry showcase that night, but the ACT is that morning. So the next class is December the 10th. Uh, schools have raised those merit scholarships. The dollars have gone up for 21 and above. The class is December the 3rd. The ACT is December the 10th. So you need to get signed up and make sure that that student of yours is well prepared for the ACT. Visit with my friends at CootsCramCourse.com. Aerial coverage brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. Roofing, the siding, windows, all of that done by Exterior Home Solutions. Kick goes into the end zone, and now the uh, Patriots down seven to nothing. Uh, the LMU halftime report, our Matlock kick for ties. By the way, we had a kid last week. Uh, I've always said uh, we, we have one band. Farragut will be standing on the sideline. And Fellowship of Christian Athletes will be here. Um, the kid, When the kid lines up and he says, I'm going to go barefooted. Well, that happened a few weeks ago and he didn't make it. Though. And then he starts taking two steps back and two steps to his left and taps his toe. You know there's a pretty good chance at the – yeah, that, I was getting texts. That was a setup. Er, er, Eric picked a ringer. I said, Eric doesn't pick them. Isaiah Hall, boy, he's got a nice lively arm. He, he does, but if that, if the Farragut linebacker, which was playing underneath there, steps in front, this thing could be in the end zone going the other direction. Well, it's a 90 mile an hour fast. Pickup of eight yards. The Farragut drive four plays of 60 yards in 137. Ashton Offer the 35 yard touchdown. 
second down and two. They'll go back to the ground inside. And maybe a yard short, Aaron King. Yeah, if you look out there in the in the defensive backfield for Fair, you had number nine, Jackson or Jordan Shepard. He came in for Jackson Fisher, who went down last week against Bearden for with a knee injury back in there tonight. You know, he had an interception in the third quarter against Bearden last week, playing good defense already here today. But uh, in for a guy in Jackson Fisher, who was one of the team leaders on defense, not out there tonight. Yeah, big loss for them. So it brings up a third down and one after the one yard gain back to the ground spin move and they'll be stopped short of the first down pressure from behind by Caro. Yeah, really a nice effort by Sean Jackson to even get back to fourth and a half yard. Well, you, you had second down and two. And he picked up one yard on two plays, so the second straight, Jefferson County three and out. First quarter, Greenville up on Fulton, 16 to nothing. Third punt of the night, if they punt, Farragut crowding the line of scrimmage. And the Patriots will indeed punt it away. Maybe partially blocked, although the flag comes in. So the official says that it was not partially blocked. And this penalty will give Jefferson County a first down. Jonathan Barron, the punter. It sure felt like they got home to me. I thought they got a piece of it, but then the flag came in. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number 20, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Let's take a look at it here. Give us a better look. Nope. Nope. I don't think so. get to it. That's a good call. Yeah. Good call. In real, in real time, Eric, it looked like they got home. Oh, it was a good effort, but I, I was just telling Skip, yeah, they, they, they crushed them. That was a good call. <laughs> Throw this one out. Boy, nice lively arm again. Xavier James on the catch. Yeah, and, and he, to me, is the best playmaker for Jeff County. I think the more they can work him into the offense, the more success they're going to have. End of one at Dobbins Bennett. Bearden up 7 6. Extra point missed the difference in that one. Second down and seven, back to the ground. Pushing the pile, and it'll bring up a third down and a yard. And since you're past midfield, you would anticipate four down territory if you don't pick it up here. Again, great effort. Same kid as earlier, Sean Jackson. This is where is a as teams mirror their head coach, former offensive lineman, will you expect your guys to dominate here? Be surprised if it's anything but an inside handoff off right tackle. And they'll play fake. Catch is made, and I'm surprised. 42 yard line, it's a first down. That was Avian James. Ian. His quarterback, Isaiah Hall, have a really good connection. First time in Farragut territory for the Patriots, and they may be content to get to the end of the quarter, and I believe they are. 7 nothing Farragut, uh, the only damage of the game so far, a 35-yard touchdown from Luke Johnson to Ashton Auker on OEB Law Playoff Friday, presented by Pilot Company. We're through one, Admirals up 7-0. Friday is brought to you by Pilot Company, Ted Russell Ford, Food City, and Lincoln Memorial University. Football is back, and OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. 
If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. I chose LMU because I wanted doors to open for me. For my future to have endless possibilities. To know I could become anything I wanted to be. Objection, Your Honor. I always wanted to say that. So whether I wanted to be a veterinarian, a high school teacher, let's turn to page 32, or a successful dentist, I knew LMU would help me get there. All I had to do was open the door. Hi, I'm Laura Ash. I'm a State Farm agent in Farragut. I've been an agent here for 14 years and I'd love to earn your business. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're there for you if you're buying a home, a car, or you have a teenager that's starting to drive. We can help with all of that. We'd love to earn your business. When it comes to the game of football, teamwork is critical for success. When it comes to customer service and business, that team approach is just as critical. That's why we're such believers in our friends at Exterior Home Solutions. We have seen firsthand how Exterior Home Solutions has supported our community and treats their customers just like family. So when it comes to roofing, siding, or maybe a complete overhaul, please make Exterior Home Solutions your first and only call. Community banking is about location and much more. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of the people, families, and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank, life made better. Football is back, and OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. Rivalry Thursday is brought to you in part by Knoxville Orthopedic Clinics, proud orthopedic provider for the Rivalry Showcase. Second quarter is brought to you by the ministry that is Fellowship of Christian Athletes, changing the lives of athletes all over East Tennessee, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. State Farm T-shirt toss is brought to you by Laura Ash, Jessica Green, Jeanette Rogers, and... Scotty Dykes, our thanks to the final four when it comes to State Farm. 7 0 Farragut after one over Jefferson County. But the Patriots a first down at the Farragut 42 yard line. And they'll play fake. And there's a guy that you take. He's, he's got a little bit of wiggle to him, Zavion James, as you take a look at the first quarter stats brought to you by OEB Law. Really kind of dominated by Farragut. Jeff County's shown a little bit of life, especially on the ground. But on this drive, they've been winning early downs, which is why you've seen them have some success right here in the second, scrimmaging at second and four. Eighth play of the drive. Inside handoff, and boy, Jeff County really having success on the ground as they go back to Sean Jackson, who is a freshman, by the way. Spencer, Spencer Riley, pardon me, Spencer talking about next year he'll have four and a half of the offensive linemen back, essentially. Xavier James, just a junior, he'll be back. Hall, the quarterback, junior back. back. I mean, he, he says we'll have most everybody back. Uh, right, right there is a, a nice job by the Farragut defensive line coming through, getting a big stop, led by number 40 for the Admirals, that being Matthew Purvis. One and nine, Udawa and Powell tied at seven. So they go to the second quarter. Nobody, Nobody's playing with West. I know the Powell people, they'd have to win in a shootout. Loss of a yard, make it second down. We'll call it 10, 10 and a half maybe. Hall throws this one out, gets nice a nice job. block. Block, yep. And close to first down yardage, maybe getting it is McGall. Yeah, but watch number two, Bryson Letterman. Watch the little block right there, little rub block. The best thing he did right there. He didn't make contact until after the ball was caught. Right. 
Had he done that beforehand, it would have been a pick. Nice discipline. Gain of 11 and a first down. I think very important for Jefferson County is the underdog tonight. Yep. To answer and tie this thing up now that you're in the D1 red zone. Hall will play fake. Throws this one for the end zone. Throws it oh home. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my what goodness. A play. Okay, that is the You Got Mossed play of the year. Jordan Shepard, the one-handed snag in the back of the end zone. <laughs> wow. That was phenomenal because it was just so, like, like, nonchalant. Watch this. He's like, and eh, give it to me. And now watch him. He's like, oh my uh, no. God. He, he, like, looks around. He's like, hey, did you get that? Okay. Oh, uh, no, I'll take a knee. Yeah, that's one that was just profiled. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to send that one in. <laughs> look, at, look at Doucette. Doucette's like, that's better than my Patriots could have done. Look at Doucette. Yeah, that, that's one that uh, we're definitely going to have to send to ESPN, see if they can get that on. You got mossed. So they'll go to the air. Luke Johnson catches made. They'll get the first down for Davila, just past the 30. Hank DeVault. Yeah, actually, DeVault, yeah, slides in there. Hank DeVault, a senior. I tell you what, if uh, if Farragut wins this game, mark that interception down. Uh, Jeff County going for the end zone, going for the tie here in the second quarter. Well, they, they tried to do, you know, they went short, 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 and they faked the, the, the short route and then tried to hit a guy. Oh, football is out. And Jeff County's got it. And are they saying he's down? Yep. Official on the near side very adamantly says, Carrier was down at the 35-yard line, and Spencer really wanted that one. A little grimace. And we have the opportunity to take a look at it. And I think he down. was definitely down. Yeah, down. down. Yeah. Good call. Luke Johnson has some time. Throws this one deep. Good coverage. And knocked away. That was a great play by nine for Jeff County. That's Grauman again. Yep. Keaton Grauman because Ocker had him beat by a step. Let's say this about Grauman. 5'10", 170. He plays a little taller than that. He got long well, and, arms. Yeah, and Eric, the key to that play is he turned around, he found the ball, and he had just as much of a right to the football as a receiver. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was that was teach tape on how to defend that pass down there deep down the field. I'll tell you what, guys. Jefferson County's defensive line has risen to the account to challenge Destin Adams. Really good series. With that said, Luke Johnson will get the football into Jeff County territory, and that is to be a gain of 17 yards. Just never feels like fear gets in any kind of like rush. They just kind of do their thing. Very calm. Davila, a junior, number five. Right up the middle. Tough running down inside the 40. About a yard short of a first down. Another great shot, another great uh, down to take a shot right here. Basically the same situation as last time. I mean, what a turnaround. Jeff County down inside the 20, the incredible interception. Now Farragut already inside the 40. And they will play fake. There's this one to the far side to Auker. He'll get the first down and not much more down inside the 35. At the 33, gain of six. Arker's got some juice to him. Transfer from William Blunt. Austin East up on nine and one. Chucky Doak, eight seven in the second quarter. Great job by Antonio Mays and his staff so far. And Hall's up on Boone, seven to six. He'll turn with the inside handoff, and uh, boy, he got quick feet. 
into the second level of the defense, down to the 22-yard line, gain of 11, just like that. This has got to be deflating for uh, for Jeff County. Uh, just kind of a, a what might have been down at the 18-yard line, eighth play of the drive, first down and 10. Johnson with some time, can run if he wants, but will throw across the middle. Catch is made. Big tackle, big hit, I should say. Bryson Letterman. Hawker <laughs> gets up and he's doing the whole it's stuck to my hands. <laughs> Boy, just that quickly into the D1 red zone brought to you by D1 Sports Training. With 10 and a half minutes to go, it felt like, man, this is getting ready to be tied. Early second quarter. Now all of a sudden it's feeling like the, uh, the total opposite of that. Inside handoff, looking to the outside, using the speed, cutting back inside, touchdown. Elijah Gibbs on a seven-yard touchdown to give the Admirals a two-possession lead. Yeah, that's a great job by Hank DeVault. Out there on the edge, blocking at the wide receiver spot. Gibbs bounces it, bounces it. There's DeVault out wide. It's quick. Extra point to make it 14 0, and that quickly, the Admirals up two scores on OEB Law. Playoff Friday presented by Pilot Company. Admirals up 14. That time now for the Gamboozes game night makeover. And we head down to the sideline. Oh, goodness gracious. That's Check me. out this head of hair. Oh, I'm on here. Hey. <laughs> this is, uh, this is Carter. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's here very we go. Exciting, outspoken gentleman right here is going to get a haircut tonight. He's uh, he's very tied to all these curls. Yeah. You see all that? That's a big that's a take big Take the thing. hat off? Yeah, well, yeah, it, yeah we'll, we'll take the hat off. But I'd just like to say, go balls. <laughs> all right. Go he's balls. ready. Go <laughs> big orange. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Hobson. Yeah. Yeah, so awesome. We're gonna we're gonna get in here. We're gonna take some texture out of the top of it, so we can keep it flipping out from under his hat. That's the way he likes to wear it. He's really tied to the curls on the outside, but I also want to show a way that we can make him style it a different way, so that he has all this hair and he can wear it under his hat like this, but he can make it look good too. Eric, you talk about uh, top button Tuesday. He's got no button Friday. <laughs> That's right. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Not, none at all. That, gotta let all that imaginary chest hair fall. <laughs> 
telling you, this is going to be a good one. Can't oh, wait yeah. to see it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Good luck down there. Thanks, man. We're pulling for you. <laughs> Wyatt couldn't even see the head of hair underneath the hat. Well, key possession here. I'm trying to say anything nobody already knows, but uh, key possession here for Jefferson County down 14 nothing. Six fifty one to go. Central over Tennessee High, six to nothing. Paul throws this one out. Nice blocking and a gain out to the 24 for Williamson. A very good drive, nine plays, 80 yards in 324. And those seven points off of the Jefferson County turnover, the uh, incredible interception in the end zone. Keep in mind that Jeff County will get the football to start the second half. They'll go back to the ground. So I don't think you, I don't think you're in panic mode. You realize you, you got a possession to start the second half. No, you're not in panic mode, but you you can't be down 14 to nothing or worse going to halftime. You got to find something here late in this first half, I mean, halfway through the second quarter. Third down and four. Powell now up 14 to seven at home. Third down and four, how big is this? Hall throws this one out and beautifully played by Kent Carball. And the Patriots are in danger zone here, down 14 to nothing and having to punt. Well, I'm going to give the ball to, you know, unless they can get fair, get to not field the punt, and you get a big carom, you're likely sitting there with Farragut at midfield. Third punt of the night. They'll bounce this one back, try to get rid of it, and they won't. Admirals will get the football inside the 10 down at the eight yard line. And it's beyond danger zone time for the Patriots. That's twice they've had exchange problems on the snap on a punt tonight. First time they got away with it, this time did not. Not much you can do when the ball rolled back to you like that. So officially the football at the nine yard line. And the Admirals will go back to Gibbs. That's a great job by Gibbs because he was getting ready to get swallowed up for a loss and he just kind of cut his losses, dove forward and picked up what a yard, maybe two. Yeah, nice move inside. Gain of one. Second and goal. Second and goal for the eight. Good look there at Keyshawn Boyd, 5'8", 235. Just a sophomore on the defensive front for the Patriots. Second down and goal. Boy, nice job getting in the backfield and the Patriots trying to get out of this one, but look out. <laughs> the best negative five yard run. Yeah. Well, they just let him walk right into the backfield. Dawson Emmons, first to make contact. Yeah, there for a second he thought Gibbs was going to make a something out of nothing. And, uh, Nolan Bissell, Bissell. Third down and 14. Third down and goal. Play fake for Johnson. Feels some pressure. Could be a flag for a hold. I don't see one down. Yeah, I thought they were holding the Jeff County defensive lineman as well. They'll send out the kicking team take, as take uh, the three. Yeah, you know, Reese Keeney try to make it 17 nothing. By the way, big stop for the Patriot defense. Huge stop. 
just because, I mean, I, even if he makes this, it's a three-score game, just some momentum, you know. Again, Jeff Kenny's defense has not done a bad job tonight. Kenny, a 24-yard field goal from the right hash. Kick is up, and it is good. And a 17-0 Farragut lead. Let's take a quick uh, break and a break from our friend Pete Hall over at Dynabody. Here with Pete Hall from Dynabody. You sent me some pictures. You guys are really big into the custom stuff. Yes, I sent you pictures. Um, one of the pictures I sent was a rack with a custom logo at the top. It's going to a high school in North Carolina. The one on the left? That's the one on the right, the okay. yellow one. It's going to a high school in North Carolina along with 12 other racks and benches. And then the piece on the left is one of our signature pieces. It's called a power press. It's a standing bench press. And they sell, I mean, we sell a tremendous amount of them. So the key to these is, is that if someone has something that they want, you guys can go make it for them. Make it any color of paint, any color of upholstery. There's no extra charge for custom work. Christmas is coming. Very soon. It's never too soon to shop. Dynabody.com. 17 to nothing. Farragut uh, with the lead and a uh, number of uh, games around the area uh, of interest. Uh, Bearden now up on uh, Dobbins minutes. Still hanging in there in a defensive affair, 7 to 6. Oak Ridge has uh, extended their lead just a little bit on Ray County at uh, 15 to 7. Other scores that are grabbing you right there. Well, I mean, you, you look, Chucky Doak leads Austin East 13 to 8. That, that, that stands out to me. Central only up 6 0 on Tennessee High at halftime. That stands out to me. Hall's in the game against Boone. Boone's a team that has done a phenomenal job all year long. Especially on the defensive side. On the defensive side. Yeah. And, and for Halls to be playing right there with them as the four seed, a team that wasn't even in yep. the playoffs until last week when they beat Heritage, you know, says a lot about that region, maybe not so much about the other region. Yeah, Maryville uh, obviously already kind of moving on against Morristown East up 21 to nothing. Uh, Anderson County 34 nothing on Seymour as they played the, uh, that was the first quarter score. So uh, Coalfield up 42 nothing in their game. West was up 21 to nothing against Crockett and, and had run five offensive plays. Looks like Carter's season will probably come to a close down 28-7 at Elizabethan. I'll tell you what, that Elizabethan Anderson County game next week, I think it'll be pretty good. Sure. This ball knocked down that fair get defensive front. Sevier County at 14-7 on Morristown West. It was a game we considered, but uh, didn't really know what you were going to get out of Sevier County. Is the, uh, the Gambuza's game not makeovers happening down there? Love the love the spirit of the young man we've got working down there. Third down and seven, one for five on third down. Hall across the middle. And a nice job by the safety for Farragut to come up and knock that one away. Watch the safety. Linebacker reaches back and knocks it away, Jay Smiley. And with 2.53 to go in this first half, this thing could spiral hard on Jeff County right here. The punter has had issues fielding. The snapper has had an issue snapping. <laughs> Not this time. We'll get it away. It'll be a line drive to Auker, just what he wants. Yeah, he gets it at the 45, and uh, Auker lightning in a bottle as a punt returner. Keeps the legs moving, and a nice return down to the 38-yard line. Gain of 17. Well, the Recruit Me Showcase Combine is coming up on Sunday, December the 4th, powered by D1 Sports Training. There's the QR code. Uh, any athlete, 7th grade through 12th grade, invited to be a part of the Recruit Me Showcase Combine, which is uh, Recruit Me. Don't make the coaches come find you. Don't make them research you. Give them the information that they need. The new name in recruiting help is Recruit Me. 2.39 to go, first half. Farragut up 17-0 and looking for more. Has some time. And finally going to be taken down back at the 45. Ball comes loose. 
Yeah, it was a covered sack. I mean, he had all day, and eventually the time just ran out. Kudos to the Jeff County secondary for hanging in there and giving their defensive line a chance to make a play. Finally getting home was Dallas Williamson. Powell has extended their lead to 28 to seven. Jefferson County second sack of the game so far that a loss of six yards second down and 16 the flag comes in. Probably snap snap infraction offense number 75 it's five yard penalty still second down. Under two minutes to go in the first half, and if you're Spencer Riley, as you look at Eddie Courtney, by the way, Eddie Courtney going for his 200th win of his career tonight. Luke Johnson, the quarterback, has time. Zings this one out to Davila. Steps out uh, inside the 40. Well, mark it at the 37-yard line, gain of 12 yards. Eddie Courtney, the head coach, the offensive coordinator, his son, Jeff Courtney, who the principal, uh, Dr. John Bartlett, has already said when Eddie Courtney decides he's done, there is no coaching search. Jeff Courtney is the next head coach. According to Dr. Bartlett, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Johnson with some pressure from behind, taken down, third sack of the night. Back at the 45-yard line, and that one by Braden Griffin, who is a junior. So there you see Eddie Courtney and his son Jeff uh, off to his right at the top of your screen, top left of your screen. Played here for his dad. And a punting situation here. Fourth down and 16. That's a real win for Jeff County just to get off the field. Third punt of the night for Farragut. Three timeouts left for the Patriots. And they'll snap this one. Keeney with a high punt. And the catch is made at the 12 yard line. High into the hamburger haze here at Farragut. Off to the right. As Austin loves my phrase, the hamburger haze. Hey, congratulations to the E2 Sports Scholar Athlete of the Night for Jefferson County. Braden Griffin, a senior, 4.09 GPA, transferred over from Lakeway Christian. They really didn't know what they had until he showed up, and then all of a sudden they realized they had a pretty good football player on their hands. By the way, we mentioned E2 Sports. They are uh, now carrying Riddell Youth Helmets for youth leagues and middle schools. Um, so call and talk to their experienced oh, staff. And we'll help you out. Almost intercepted. That would have been uh, disastrous. Yeah, Fair gets jumping those short routes. I think if Jeff Kane's going to throw it, they've got to go vertical. John Duncan that time kicking himself after that one. All has some time looking to throw. Rolls right and zings this one downfield. Receiver is there. Catch is made out to midfield. And now with 26 seconds to go as Keen Phipps comes up with the big reception. Jeff County, who gets the football to start the second half, still has the three timeouts, is in business on a 37-yard completion. Yeah, he just kind of got lost behind the Farragut secondary. And uh, Phipps, someone who, uh, you know, just kind of continues to get better inside the program, even in his senior year. 26 to go, and Hall will look to throw again. Throws this one out, and this one is picked off. Admirals. Down the sideline, oh, drops nice the job. football, 
and what, Jeff County comes up wh- with it. What a play by Sean Jackson because that may end up being six. He may have just saved a touchdown. Watch him use his left hand and get in there and poke that away. Griffin Mashburn on the interception, but to Austin's point, the running back turns into defender and reaches over and knocks it away. And then dives on it himself. Spencer says, let's just get it to halftime. (laughs) Take a knee. (laughs) I mean, maybe he throws it right here. Why not? Just chug it deep. Uh, An inside handoff and see if you can break one. Give it back to the kid that made the play. Spin out past the 35, and, yeah, they're going to get to the half. And the Matlock kick for tires is coming up next along with our bands and our FCA and uh, Thrill a Minute in the last second there. Logan West going to handle the festivities for Matlock. I've been on the phone with him multiple times this week. Matlock Tire helped me. They got a new tire coming for one of my daughter's cars. I'm doing work on another car. I, I swear I've been on the phone all week long with this guy standing next to Eric Kane. So we got Logan here, as you've already introduced, and you're one of the managers here at the Farragut location, right? Yes, sir. I'm one of the managers at Farragut down the road, and we're excited about tonight, and hopefully you make this kick. All right, so we got Matt right here. Matt, have you ever kicked a field goal before? And if so, or if not, what's kind of your confidence level right now? I've never kicked one, but we'll see. We'll see. Now, the kid last week lied to me, so you never kicked one. No, I'm a baseball player. I'm a pitcher. I'm All right, pitcher. let's let's see it right here. It's gonna be it's gonna be a 35-yard field goal. 35. Yeah, famous last words. I'm a baseball player. <laughs> Looks like an athlete, though, so let's see. He's, he's got his, sh- he got his shoes on, on, Mark. Oh, shoes or boots? He's got shoes on. Okay. He's left-footed. He's a lefty. Yeah, he didn't know what he's doing. He's not making this. There's and no the kick. way. Yeah, there is no way. Just a little right. Just a little right. Just always, a bit outside. Always a whole lot of fun here with a Matlock kick for tires. And we're going to head to the LMU Halftime Reports with the halftime score of Farragut leading Jefferson County 17 to nothing in the first round. Playoff Friday is brought to you by Commercial Bank, Humana, E2 Sports, and OEB Law. Do you want top-of-the-line fitness equipment for home, school, or work? New or reconditioned, Dynabody in Maryville has everything you need to build that gym. Used equipment brands include Paramount, Life Fitness, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, and Precore. Reach for the power with Dynabody. Matlock Tire has a reputation for being a little bit old school. We're proud to be known for our outstanding hometown customer service. We've been doing things that way for over 60 years. But Matlock now offers new modern conveniences, such as family-friendly waiting areas, online appointment scheduling. You can even shop for tires and see our current stock right from your computer or smartphone. We invite you to stop into one of our five convenient locations or come see us online at matlocktireservice.com. Modern convenience, hometown service. Matlock Tire Service and Auto Repair. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Costa. Dr. Malone and I here at Knoxville Smiles are here to help you with any of your dental needs, whether it's a routine cleaning, a root canal, or if you just want some advice. Did you know that you don't have to settle for a denture anymore? My team and Dr. Malone are here to help you no matter where you're at and to help you figure out the truth for your dental health. So give us a call or visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Annie Jones. I'm the owner of Top Flight Athletics in Kingston. Hi, I'm Rob Black, Athletic Director at Fulton High School. When it comes to apparel and uniforms for our girls, um, quality and efficiency are most important. So I've got a lot of cheer moms to deal with. When we think of apparel and equipment vendors, you know, we're thinking about people who we can trust and people that we have a relationship with and uh, some, someone that will make sure we get what we want when we want it and it'll look the way that we uh, designed it. That and the fact that they are locally owned is the reason that we do business with E2 Sports. E2 Sports has been that for us and that's who we're, we're in partnership with right now and couldn't be more proud to do so. Reach for the power with Dynabody. New Dynabody workout equipment is made right here in Tennessee and shipped across the country. Right now, get heavy savings during our fall clearance. Go online to Dynabody.com or call to get started today. 
Hi, I'm Jessica Green. I'm your Loudon and Sweetwater State Farm agent. With 64 years of combined insurance experience, my team and I make sure that your insurance is the right fit for you and your family. No matter how complex your needs are, my team and I keep one simple goal in mind, to help you get the coverage you need with the personal service you'd expect from any hometown company. At my agency, we go beyond products to the relationships. You're a person to us, not just a number. That's how I do business as your agent and as your neighbor. My team and I enjoy helping customers find the right policy, whether it's for their auto insurance, home insurance, renter's insurance, life insurance, or multiple other products that we offer. Call, text, or come see us today or in the near future at our convenient Loudoun or Sweetwater location. I would love to earn your business. Welcome to the Playoff Friday Halftime Report. Brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Hey, welcome back to Farragut. Halftime score here on OEB Playoff Friday. Presented by Pilot Company. 17-0 Farragut with the lead over Jefferson County. So, as we mentioned to you before the game started, tad bit of an issue with the Farragut band tonight. 31 kids are out with the flu. Uh, so what they have done is they said, you know, we're just going to stay on the home side. We're going to play on the track. We're going to play in the stands. And so that's what we're setting up. Now, the flag core, it appears, is out on the field of play. Uh, but everyone else is kind of keeping it close to the vest, if you will. And time now for the Gray Hodges Sounds of the Band. It's the Rivalry Thursday Sounds of the Band, sponsored by Gray Hodges Corporation, supplier of craft-made cabinetry. By the way, the invitations have been sent out. If you'd like to be a part of the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase Band, uh, Ron Rogers, former band director here at Farragut, along with Megan Christian over at Bearden, heading that up. Uh, you can contact Ron Rogers by emailing him, rogers886 at gmail.com for any band member, band director, to be a part of the Rivalry Showcase Band. That game will be Saturday, December the 10th, 7 o'clock at Anderson County High School. The band spotlight tonight is brought to you by Exterior Home Solutions. And Samantha Garner, Madison Moshier, Ella Pinchock, and Jack Osorio, our Farragut band drum majors, all being honored tonight by Exterior Home Solutions. All right, time now for our uh, FCA spotlight here at halftime. And uh, down on the sideline, Derek Wright, 
uh, who is uh, one of the key members of Farragut High School. And Derek, I know you guys have, have got a lot that you're excited about here uh, in Admiral Country. Ab absolutely. Thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come speak about FCA and represent what we're doing here as a ministry. Uh, I played basketball for Coach Henry at Farragut Middle School. And in 2002, 20 years ago, he asked me to come speak at a huddle meeting. And 20 years later, I'm still there, and he hasn't, they've not been able to get rid of me. I think they forget about us sometimes uh, as far as who's coming to speak, so I stay under the radar, but it's such a blessing, and we, we talk about YFCA, and our, our, one of the themes I try to talk to the kids about is, uh, it's Hebrews 12, 10, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, and, and, and our goal is to help teach the kids and encourage the kids to fix their eyes on Jesus in their sports and on their club teams and school teams, and, and that's why at Farragut Middle School, we have 75 to 100 kids meeting weekly to talk about the Lord, study the Word, and at the high school, it is just as strong, and a uh, shout out to Coach Burris, so the ba new basketball coach, he told me tonight, he said he, his team had the most kids represented of any team on campus, so that's what an great. exciting time at, at, at on Farragut campus for FCA. That's great. Derek, also, Eddie Courtney, I know, uh, going for his 200th win tonight uh, as the head coach of Farragut, and uh, before the game, he and Craig Kisabeth, who was always a big big supporter of FCA, two great men right there. Since I was a student at Farragut High School many years ago, Coach Courtney has been a, a strong supporter and encourager of FCA. We appreciate him. He is such a blessing to so many people in our community, and especially FCA and the ministries on campus. And I couldn't thank him enough for his support of our youth football program. Of course, as our high school coach, I have sons that play football in the program, and I, I love Coach Courtney. I really appreciate what he does for us. And yes, as an advocate for FCA, it couldn't be stronger without him up there on campus. Derek, I appreciate your time. Appreciate all that you're doing. Thank you, Mark. And, and at Jeff County, too, uh, I, I want to speak to them. They had a Fields of Faith event recently. went okay. so well. And uh, Miss Satterfield and Miss Hudson are key members there, key leaders there. We appreciate them, what they're doing at Jeff County as well. Sounds good. Derek, thank you Thanks, so Mark. much. And we'll go appreciate from this you. interview. Thank you. We'll go down to the uh, field. Eric Kane's favorite part of his week is the FCA Dizzy Bat Race. I love it, man. We got a great uh, gift bag down here, ready for the FCA Dizzy Bat Race. They're ready to roll. All right, guys, five spins, and then you go grab the pile up. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> and he slides in safely. I think they did five this time, Mark. I think they did. <laughs> By the way, I love, what's the deal with the outfit there? Is that like a bear or what? It's a onesie. It's a Christmas onesie. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, that's a Care Bear over there, yeah. But hey, a lot of fun on the FCA Dizzy Bat Challenge each and every week. More of the LMU Halftime Report coming up next.
watching the Playoff Friday Halftime Report. Brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Well, one team that's having to do it without their best player through the playoffs is Maryville. Uh, no problem tonight. They're beating Morristown East 35 to nothing as they play at the half. But Noah Vaughn, the Virginia commitment at running back, broke his leg in the loss to West just a couple of weeks ago. Austin had a chance to catch up with him before that happened to talk about the future of this great young running back for the Rebels. Here at Maribel with running back senior Noah Vaughn. Noah, you're the, the, the bell cow, the leader of this group. Just kind of take me through how you kind of feel like you transformed maybe from last year all the way through the offseason into this 2022 year. Uh, last year, you know, we had some players like Markel Fortenberry, uh, Mike Bethea, Carson Jones. You know, they really filled the, filled the leadership roles on this team. And uh, me being a senior, I've really been trying to fill my role as being a leader on this team making sure our team comes out here and performs every day at practice, summer workouts, holding my people accountable. You know, that's really been my role this whole offseason. You're committed to Virginia. It's going to be smart to go to Virginia. And I can tell you, you you're, a, you, you're really smart as far as being able to handle an interview. Kind of take me through the decision when they pulled the trigger and offered. How quick did you kind of go, man, that's just a good spot for me. Great uh, education. I mean, I, I went up there. I got the offer after I went to a camp. I went back up there the next week. I realized this is the place for me, and I wanted to secure my spot there because with everything going on, I wanted to make sure I still had my scholarship offer at Virginia. So the next week I decided to commit, and I think it was a really good decision for me. What do you feel like you bring to Maryland? Uh, I think I bring, uh, a great, I bring a variety. I can run the ball. I can split out and uh, uh, catch a football. And I also, I think, more mentally, I think I get our players ready to play a football game. Uh, they rely on me, I rely on them, and I feel like it's a real good trust between us. So, if I described American football and I said the, the one word that comes to mind for me is balance. Mm -hmm. You can throw it, you can run it, and they've always been able to. Is that pretty accurate for you? Yeah, that's very accurate. When you when you talk about your game, do you think balance is a good way? Because you talked about being able to catch it out of the backfield so you can split out and go in the slot. They obviously can hand it to you 25 times if need be. Yeah, I, w I would. I say I make I make a team respect me when I split out into the slot. They're going to have to respect me in coverage, and they're not going to be able to pack the box in. And then, like, we got Gage will do. Like, last year, uh, I think I didn't have a touchdown in the Alcoa game, man. In that game, they used me as a decoy one play, and he got to score the touchdown. So it really just opens up opportunities for other players on this team. I guess when you watch football, is there anybody you try to emulate your game after? Uh, I do. I do have some players that I really like, uh, and that I try to model my craft after. Uh, prime Adrian Peterson. I I, I always watch his film, and Alvin Kamara. Those are my two people that I I really admire them. What What about their games that stands out for you? Uh, uh, Kamara's elusiveness, like the way he sees everything, sets it up, and Does I like move in slow motion. Yeah, that's what. That's how I try to replicate my game. For you, what's a successful year? Not say titles, how you but judge it team wise. But for you individually, what what would be for you? A uh, successful year, I would say uh, at least probably 1,700 yards rushing, and about 500 receiving. And that that sounds like a good year to me, and then 20 plus touchdowns. Well, if you've seen those highlights on Friday night, he is well on his way to those numbers. Probably going to over exceed them this year, Mr. Noah Vaughn here at Maryland. Thank you. Well, time now for the Gamboos' game night makeover oh, reveal, <laughs> and now we've got an entourage down uh, there. Yeah, I tell you what, Mark, I had a task with this. Once I was able to pry the hat off of him, and I got to see where all those curls were coming from, there was a lot of hair on here. So what I tried to do was get him to like to get down with the Matthew McConaughey, but he didn't know who that was. So, uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, I know, right? I had to back it up a little bit and say we're going to slick it up, and make you look good for the crowd and for the game tomorrow. Uh, but if you look around, all these guys beside me, all these kids. They have one thing in common, and that's that they like those curls on their forehead, but not in their eyes. So what we did is we took all the weight off the top, and we made it to where all he's got to do is slick it back for Sunday, and before he goes to school on Monday, mess it up, and he's got more <laughs> curls than he started with. He looks he looks happy. Yeah, he had a fun. He's having fun with it. You look happy. Mark said you look happy. Yeah. Go balls. <laughs> go balls. It's all about go balls. Yeah, he's sounds, a character. Sounds good. Hey, by the way, uh, take a shot of the QR code there for discounts. 
free haircuts and stuff at Gambuza's, plus a special from D1 Sports Training. Hey, always appreciate you coming out. Hey, I'm glad to be here, Mark. Thank you. Sounds good. Let's catch a break here. Second half when we come back on OEB Playoff Friday, presented by Pilot Company. 17-0 Farragut over Jeff County at the half. Patriots get the football to start the second half. Thanks for watching the Playoff Friday Halftime Report. Brought to you by Lincoln Memorial University. Playoff Friday is brought to you by Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Iris Networks, Knoxville Orthopedic Clinics, and Exterior Home Solutions. I chose LMU because I wanted doors to open for me. For my future to have endless possibilities. To know I could become anything I wanted to be. Objection, Your Honor. I always wanted to say that. So whether I wanted to be a veterinarian, a high school teacher, let's turn to page 32, or a successful dentist, I knew LMU would help me get there. All I had to do was open the door. Football is back. And OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your wreck into a check. Safety. Integrity. Reliability. More people trust the Joe Newbert family to return their vehicle back to its original condition or better. Only Joe Newbert Collision Centers offer pickup and delivery, worry-free insurance claim handling, and guaranteed repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. Insist on locally owned Joe Newbert Collision Centers and drive safely out there. Being a State Farm agent for over 30 years, I've walked alongside my customers through all their life stages. Saving you money on your insurance is something I take pride in, but earning your trust is something I value just as much. You can count on me to be there through all life's joyous moments. Real comfort, real food, real good. For almost 30 years, that's been Aubrey's commitment to you. But when everything changed overnight, you taught us what real good really looks like. You've called in takeout and delivery orders. And sometimes you just called to say hello. Thank you. Thank you for ordering, tipping so generously, and helping us keep people working. Because that's what real good really looks like. And we'll never forget it. Apparel for Playoff Friday is furnished by E2 Sports and Adidas. E2 Sports, online at myE2Sports.com. Right, the third quarter is brought to you by Pilot Company. Our sponsor has been with us since the very beginning. 17 0 Farragut with the lead on OEB Playoff Friday, presented by Pilot Company. Gorgeous shot tonight out in West Knoxville. Uh, they fair good team that's having a pretty good night. Yep, Luke Johnson with a pretty pitch and catch right there. Jeff K's defense tried to step up, able to get the sack on Johnson. Then Johnson eventually would come right down the middle in the first strike of the night to Ashton Ocker. It was 7-0 Admirals. Yeah, and here's the play of the night right here. The interception, one-handed grab in the end zone. Not just the great grab that was made by Jordan Shepard, but the fact that what it did is, is it, it stopped Jefferson County from tying the game at seven, and then the touchdown here made it 14 to nothing. Yeah, Elijah Gibbs gets in, and uh, Jefferson County had some special team snafus in the first half. Good way this to say would, it. That this would lead to a field goal. That would make it 17 to nothing, and that's currently where we are. Could be worse. Um, is, is Jeff Kenny able to hold Farragut out of the end zone late in the half, kind of get a stop, and then a nice strip of the ball after a, a pick that could have yeah. easily turned into six. You look at the first half stats. Yeah, I think the total yards there for Farragut's 146 uh, to 114. Fairly even if you want to look at the stats. Yeah, I mean, back and forth, both teams moved the ball. Just stats. Farragut cashed in. Jeff County threw a pick. Yeah. Well, let's head back down to uh, Eric Kane, who is uh, down there somewhere. Eric? Apparently no Eric, but we'll get back to Eric here in just a few minutes. So we'll turn our attention to the second half of the game, 17 to nothing. Farragut has the lead on Jeff County. So what does Jeff County have to do to get back in this game? 
Well, they got to score first uh, first drive of the second half. Yeah. You, you get the ball first, you've got to go find six points. You make it 17-7, and then hang on from there. Just kind of just kind of stay in there. Eric Kane, what do you think the keys are in the second half? I mean, for Jeff County, you just I mean, you can't get it all back at once, right? I mean, you're moving the football. You got in the red zone one time, obviously turned it over, but just keep running the football. You're getting it good there. Just, again, can't get it all back here. If you're Farragut, keep doing exactly what you're doing. Knockout you're playing, punch. Uh, Knockout punch yeah. if you're Farragut. You're playing aggressive defense, but go down here and score the first time you get the football and put it out of reach. That's the reason this drive is so important. 175 total yards for Farragut uh, is the actual number uh, from Joe McNish. So often rolling in the second half, and the Patriots, you know, started off running the football well. Kind of got away from it as Isaiah Hall threw 16 passes in the first half, 8 of 16. Well, Farragut started to creep more people up and, and started to slow down that Jeff County running game. And, and then, the, then they struggled with the, you know, the short passing game. They did find a couple of connections going vertically, though. Football at the 20 for the Patriots, and I'd be surprised if they don't go just back to the ground, and uh, they had a lot of success with this right here. Right up the middle, they'll get the first down out past the 35-yard line, and that's Jackson. Nine carries, 36 yards in the first half. I'd keep feeding him. Well, there's a flag here. Looks like we're going to add a few yards to this run. 18-yard run, though which will take him up over 50 for the football game. Face mask, defense number five. Five-guard penalty for the end of the run, first down. And just that quickly, uh, you're out past the 40-yard line. Inside handoff again, and this is where they've had their success, almost to midfield at the 49-yard line. Using the run to set up the pass. Well, ironically, they didn't do a whole lot of vertical shots in the first half, and they did very little off play action. So to me, if you're going to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, it's got to at least set up the play action, something they've really not done to this point. As Avion James, wide receiver, five catches in the first half, and now they'll throw out of it. Tackle is made, but it is for a first down, and that to Bryson Letterman. Eric Kane down on the sideline, working overtime tonight. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Sean Jackson. He's looked really good. The freshman tailback for Jeff County. Seen a lot of him since the second quarter. O'Marion Mills, not sure what the injury is, but no shoulder pads on. He will not come back in this football game. <laughs> Well, to your point, Jackson has had a really nice night. Jackson wearing number 29. He is a freshman. So something for uh, Spencer Riley to build on for the future. Jackson tonight, 62 yards on 12 carries. Second down and eight. They'll throw out of this one. And uh, there's the diminutive wide receiver that we talked about, James. His sixth catch of the night. And just short of first down yardage at the 38-yard line. I would tell you this is a great shot to take a shot. No, nope. but no. No, no, this is get the sticks move moving. the chains. Just keep the sticks moving right now. Yeah. Inside handoff, move the chains. Jackson will stick his head down. Tough running for the ninth grader down to the 33-yard line and a first down for the Patriots. Have to get this one in the blue turf. Got to score a touchdown on this drive for the Patriots. Good, tough running, sticks his head down. Just lowers the head. Realizes he's got to get a first down. Isaiah Hall feeling some pressure, rolls right, can run if he wants, and will throw this one downfield, the incompletion. He tried to force that ball, too. He's got to be careful and protect the football. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, a little surprised that they're not going back to the ground and just keep moving the football down the field. This is where they bogged down before. Hall now 8 of 17, 72 yards and two interceptions. They'll play fake, throw again. And a gain of three yards down to the 30. Third down and seven in four down territory. Well, I, I like throwing, but I like throwing the second and three, not the first, first play you know, from scrimmage. Because then you're all of a sudden playing at second and 10. I would venture to say they'll go four down territory. Here. Yeah, four down territory here. Ninth play of the drive. Be a 47 yard field goal from here. Hall will inside handoff to the outside and it will be a fourth down and five at the 28 yard line. Fourth down and five of the 28. Tenth play of the drive, two receivers near side. Hall will take a shot for the end zone, throws it up, and is Got the it. catch made? Is it a touchdown? The official did not raise his hands. <laughs> it's a touchdown. No official raised their hands. No official raised their hands for a touchdown, but it is a touchdown. <laughs> Not a single official raised their hands. <laughs> Did you see that? They just went back there behind the uprights. 17 to 6, extra point is up. Wow. And it is good. Well, the Patriots needed that touchdown and they got it. The officials didn't raise their hands, but there's seven points on the scoreboard on OEV Playoff Friday, presented by Pilot. <laughs> Playoff Friday is brought to you by Pilot Company, Ted Russell Ford, Food City and Lincoln Memorial University. Do you want top-of-the-line fitness equipment for home, school, or work? New or reconditioned, Dynabody in Merrillville has everything you need to build that gym. Used equipment brands include Paramount, Life Fitness, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, and Precore. Reach for the power with Dynabody. Blue 2020 F-150 41990. Hut! Jake drops back. He's got a deal wide open. The crowd goes wild with savings. Whether you're looking for a low mileage pre-owned truck to tailgate in or a minivan to get the whole family to the game, the pre-owned patrol has what you're looking for. Only at Ted Russell Ford on Kingston Pike or Parkside Drive. Hey, this is UT head football coach, Josh Heifel. It's football time in Tennessee. When the Big Orange play, you don't have to miss a second of the action before, during, and after the game. Just make sure your radios are tuned in to 107.7 WIVK. Or if you're on the go, download the WIVK app and listen anyway. Your flagship station for the Tennessee Volunteers. 107.7 WIVK. It's a Tennessee tradition. Hi, I'm Anderson County Head Football Coach David Gill, and I want to tell you about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions, East Tennessee's first choice in roofing. They've been servicing East Tennessee for over 20 years, achieving a 4.9 rating on Google reviews and are listed as a platinum contractor by Owens Corning. Financing is available. I invite you to learn more about my friends at Exterior Home Solutions on their website, exteriorhomesolutions.com, or give them a call at 865-524-5888. Fireworks for the Rivalry Showcase are sponsored by OEB Law. 17 to 7, Farragut with the lead. And boy, the uh, Patriots of Jefferson County needed that drive. 10 plays, 80 yards, and 342. And on fourth down, the 28 yard touchdown pass to Letterman. 
And the Patriots uh, have something working, a stop and a score here, and uh, here we go. It vastly changes. Farragut, though, looked like the more steady team to this point. So we'll see uh, if they have an answer here. Ocker back deep. Will Jeff County give him a chance to return it? Seventeen to seven, and a pooch kick, if you will, to the near side, and the Admirals will be pinned in about the twenty-five yard line. At the Commercial Bank Robbery Showcase presented by Food City, Saturday night, December the 10th, 7 p.m. at Anderson County High School. All kinds of fireworks. We met out there this week with Tim Elrod of OEB Law providing all of our fireworks. And Gary Terry, the athletic director over there, uh, talked with our cheerleader and uh, dance sponsor coach. Going to be putting together a team from girls all over East Tennessee, the band. Hoping to have several hundred in the band. Going to be a lot of fun that night. To watch the game on CW, WBXX. The Admirals will go to the ground. Gibbs trying to get to the outside. Flag, out. come, flag comes in from behind the play. The holding against Farragut. <laughs> Halftime score, Walker Valor 14, Karn 7. Karn's defense actually stepped up pretty big after they fell behind 14 to nothing. Walker Lockhart for the pick. <laughs> Scott Meadows just continues to win playoff games over there at Pigeon Forge, 41 to nothing over Western. Two fouls on the play, holding offense number 27. That penalty's declined. Holding offense number 52. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The first down. Halftime score, Powell 35, Udawa 7. Well, a first down and 20 for the Admirals. Big spot in this game for Spencer Riley's Patriots of Jeff County. Johnson will look to throw, has time, throws this one across the middle, catches made, big hit. Jeff County saying that he didn't control it, but the officials disagree. Bryson and Letterman come through with a huge hit on Auker. Yeah, the completion to Auker. What a great pass. Oh, he got it. Kind of juggled it a little bit, but he did come up with it. 17 yards, and Gibbs here will be taken down back inside the 30. A loss of a couple of yards and a big third down and six coming up. Gatlinburg Pittman up tonight, 35-7 on Unicoi County. Well, they did say he dropped that ball. I well, know it was it was first down and 20. He had the completion. It's now third down and five. Johnson looking to throw, throws it to Gibbs out of the backfield. He'll get the first down, cuts back inside. And out to midfield, still running, finally takes the shot at the 49. But a 21-yard gain on third down and five as the Admirals moving the sticks. Just trying to reach out there and just pull him down. I mean, you have to do more than arm tackle. Daniel Boone extends the lead on Halls 30-7. First down for the Admirals inside Jefferson County territory. A little swing pass to the near side, and it will fall harmlessly to the turf. Flag is down, though, in the backfield. Hands on the hips of Eddie Courtney. He does not like the fact that uh, sloppiness is uh, ensuing. Illegal motion, do you take the penalty? Legal motion, it's the offense. A penalty is declined, the second down. Yeah, first down and 15 or second down and 10. It's 
Yes. So the illegal motion will be declined and second down and yeah. 10. You got to win this down if you're Ferry right here, or if you're Jeff Kenny, you yep. make them play it third and long. Play fake here. Boy, how about the pass? Almost knocked away. As Nolan Bissell was right there, the linebacker for Jeff County, but the arm of Luke Johnson gets it to Davila for the first down. Yeah, Landis Davila just kind of goes out seven yards, turns around, quick strike from Luke Johnson, and then get north and south for Davila. Davila tonight, seven catches for 84 yards. He's just been a, he's been a chain mover tonight. Inside handoff to Gibbs and quicker than a hiccup running over that. defenders. Big run. 11 yards and running downhill. By the way, uh, so much for the Gibbs Granger game. 49 nothing. Eli Hubbs goes 20 yards for the touchdown. Holding both hands on the football. <laughs> <laughs> Hubbs, Hubbs, I said, I said, how did Eli? This is like two weeks ago. I said, how did Eli do tonight? He goes, he caught a touchdown. He goes, he made somebody miss. <laughs> Johnson feels some pressure, sidesteps it, spins. Big hit there. He spun right into number seven, Dallas Williamson. The Central now up 14 to seven. Frank Johnson, the fourth. A pass to Josh Purcell, 61 yards. Remember, he threw one against Gibbs of the Carson Newman. Yeah. Farragut running that clock. Bring in some pressure inside handoff. Nothing doing there. We'll bring up a third down and five. And once again, for Jeff County to keep this to a two possession game. Eric Kane, you've got an update. Yeah, Jeff County running back on Marion Mills, who hasn't played since the second quarter. He's putting his shoulder pads back on. Whenever the Patriots go back out on offense, he says he's going to try and give it a go. So we'll have to watch uh, for that. But, of course, they've been making do without him. Ninth play of the drive. Third down and five. Big play for the Patriot defense. A sack back at the 31-yard line. Their fourth sack of the night. And do you send Keeney out? for a 48-yard field goal or go for it on third down and long, or fourth I, down and long. That depends on how confident you are. I mean, I, I mean, you're one of the best kickers in the state. Yeah, correct, but I mean, 48, even with a good leg, it's no, no gimme. Fourth down and 13. Johnson feels some pressure, overthrows the receiver. A flag is down at the 35. We'll call holding, I would assume. Either that or hands to the face. Yeah, hold on Farragut. So Jeff County will get the football back. Let's take a break. 17 7. KO, uh, Farragut with the lead. A break and a break from KOC. Yeah, hey, this is uh, Dr. Matt Rapay with Knox Orthopedic Clinic here to talk to you about some tips to prevent injury in football. First, it's your preparation, whether that's your strength training and your stretching. Those two need to be maximized to make sure we prevent that injury. In addition, you got to focus on your hydration and your nutrition. Those need to blend well to prevent the injury. And lastly, you got to be using the right equipment to prevent injury. All those together have to be put together to keep you from getting the injury that we all want to avoid. Big stop there for the Patriots. They haven't run this play. First time uh, Xavion James flag. With flag comes in. Holding on Jeff County. But again, though, this is what Jeff, if, if you're, you go into the fourth quarter down 10. You're in the football game. Anything can happen in that final stanza. Holding offense number 74. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. Just the second penalty of the night on Jeff County. All. Oh, man, he dropped a pick. 
almost picked off. Wow. Really fortunate to still have the football. Really fortunate. Jump right. Well, hey, credit, credit his own wide receiver there. Because he got his hand in there and knocked it away from John Duncan. Three minutes to go, third quarter, second down and 21. They'll go back to the ground. And there he is. There's that freshman. Tough running. Out to the 27-yard line, a tough gain of seven. By the way, congratulations to the uh, boys cross-country team here at Farragut. Won a state championship today. And the girls placing fifth in the state. Big day for them. Money down to the Farragut defense. Can they get off the field? Or can Jeff County sustain the drive? It's third down, 14 for the Patriots. The stands begin to shake on the home side. Third down and 14, Hall with the football. Little swing pass inside. And out to the 30, just a short gain of three yards. And a punting situation here for the Patriots. Just punt it away, play defense. Again, you're in the football game right now. Running out of opportunities. No, but again, you're in, you, you just want them to have a chance in the fourth, and right now they have a chance. Although you don't want Ashton Auker to get his hands on the football on the fifth punt of the night. Low snap again, and they'll get it away, barely. And the Admirals football at the 30-yard line. Special teams have been absolutely thrill a minute. Jonathan, a minute. Jonathan Barron on a zero-yard punt. Well, now he's being helped off the field. Just haven't gotten snaps back. Ow! Ugh! Ugh! The knee, the knee does not bend that way. No. Nope. Looks like it'll be four down territory the rest of the way for the Patriots, <laughs> I would say. Not just because you're running out of time, but uh, if you if you get off the field here, I'm with you. I, I, it doesn't make much sense to punt. Flag start, comes in. Ball start on Farragut. Prior snap, full start. Offense number 75, our penalty for first down. Again, Jeff County doesn't have to stop Farragut. They just have to hold them to a field goal. Field goal would make it 20 to seven, still a two score game. Touchdown, be about all she wrote. I'm not sure Jeff County has the firepower to score three times. By the way, still third quarter, Bearden Dobbins Bennett, still seven six, Bearden with the lead. Winner goes to Maryville. Boy, nice job getting in the backfield for the Patriots. Yeah, just beating his man was Dawson Emmons. I mean, he just whipped his man up front. So quick inside. I'll steal that line from you, Austin. Boy, they're just, they're hanging around the chicken coop. They really are. I mean, Farragut had a chance to put him away in the first half. Yep. They had a chance to go 24 0 twice. Yep. Didn't do it. Now it's 17 to 7. You get the ball off of a blocked punt at your own 31 yard line. That's the seventh tackle for loss tonight for the Patriots. Now this is not a tackle for loss here. That gets it back though. They'll bring it third and 12. Probably be the last play. Yep, be the last play of this third quarter because Farragut's not gonna run another one. They'll let that thing go down to the triple zeros, take a 10 point lead to the fourth. But again, if you're Jeff County, you won the quarter. You just need to win the next quarter by more than seven. Although, it looks like they're trying to get another playoff. I don't understand this. Third down and 12, and they'll get, make it third down and seven. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Probably the snap. Encroachment. Defense number 51. Five-yard penalty 
still third down. Maybe, but I mean, at the, at the end of the day, like, it didn't make much sense to go for that, to run another play there. And, and Jeff County's not been, no, they've only been you know, penalized now three times on the night. I mean, it's not like they've been jumping off sides a bunch. Sure. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. And yeah, we go to the fourth quarter, a 10 point lead for the Admirals. Gorgeous night for the first round of the playoffs. OEB Playoff Friday. Presented by Pilot Company, still a lot to be decided when we come back. Playoff Friday is brought to you by Dynabody, Dr. Stephen Malone and Michael Costa, Matt Locktire, and Walk-Ons. Community banking is about location and much more. It's about family. We reside in your community. We are a part of your community. At Commercial Bank, our commitment extends beyond the walls of our branches. It's displayed each day in the opportunities we provide, the money we give back, and the time we commit, all to help improve the lives of the people, families, and businesses that make our communities great. Commercial Bank, life made better. Hi, I'm State Farm Agent Scotty Dykes. While the insurance industry has changed over the years, our office offers auto, home, life, mortgages, and many other banking services, including retirement planning. Please give our office a call, text us, or email us, and we'll be happy to do business with you. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Costa. Dr. Malone and I here at Knoxville Smiles are here to help you with any of your dental needs, whether it's a routine cleaning, a root canal, or if you just want some advice. Did you know that you don't have to settle for a denture anymore? My team and Dr. Malone are here to help you no matter where you're at and to help you figure out the truth for your dental health. So give us a call or visit our website at KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Matlock Tire has a reputation for being a little bit old school. We're proud to be known for our outstanding hometown customer service. We've been doing things that way for over 60 years. But Matlock now offers new modern conveniences, such as family-friendly waiting areas, online appointment scheduling. You can even shop for tires and see our current stock right from your computer or smartphone. We invite you to stop into one of our five convenient locations or come see us online at matlocktireservice.com. Modern convenience, hometown service. Matlock Tire Service and Auto Repair. Hi, my name is Steve Shelton, Managing Principal with First Choice Lending Services. Right now, the housing market in Tennessee can be challenging, and you need the right lender to help you walk through it. We're a local lender. We're part of your community, and we know how to best serve you. When you get a home loan with First Choice Lending, you'll get a loan that is customized just for you. If you need help getting approved for a home loan, please give one of our experienced loan officers a call today. And the fourth quarter is brought to you by Hillary Frost Holmes of Keller Williams. Go to HillaryFrostHomes.com. And by the way, you could win lunch with the Vols. And boy, what a year they're having. Big game tomorrow at Georgia. Some of those players might be at lunch with you and three of your friends. We'll announce the winner Sunday night, December the 4th on the locker room. Just go to HillaryFrostHomes.com and register to win lunch with the Vols. And our thanks to Spire Sports for helping us with that. A big third down and seven coming up here for Jefferson County's Ooh, defense. Seven. Down 10. Johnson looking to throw, throws to Gibbs out of the backfield, and the ball falls to the turf, and a fourth down and seven coming up. And now looks like they're going to take the three. Yeah, now you send Keeney out there for a 45 yard field goal attempt. But again, if you're Jeff County, that's a win. Sure it is. You know you need two score, two touchdowns to win the football game. So nothing really changes. And a stoppage comes in here. The clock's a runaway clock. It one it first play of the first, first play of the fourth quarter and it's an incomplete pass shouldn't have run off 35 seconds. First final of the night, Maribel 49, Morristown East nothing. Game over before 9 o'clock. Alcoa still going? I don't know, maybe they are done. It's first final I've seen. Should, should be like 11.55. Maribel plays host to the winner of Dobbins Bennett Bearden, which is 7-6 Bearden in the second half.
kick is up and it sails wide left. So 17-7 Jefferson County dodges all bullets. Take a look at the third quarter stats brought to you by OEB. And the total yards are just mystifying in a game that's 17 to 7. Jeff Kane has been able to move between the 20s. They just penalties, interceptions. Yeah. And they, neither team has been worth anything on third downs. They're a combined three of 16. Well, Jefferson County tonight had seven tackles for loss. And that is just keeping them in this football game. Oh, in the backfield. How about the front four for the Farragut Admirals? It was just about everybody as they bring the linebacker, Jay Smiley. So we'll be interested to see what they do here if they have to run. Maybe he'll be able to give it a go. Second down and 14. Hall zings this one out. Boy, he's got nice hands. Catch is made by Keith Phipps. Uh, you, get, you get all of it back plus a little bit. So a third down and five. Boy, you need to convert here for Jeff Kim. Yeah, to me, you've got to throw things past the sticks here. No, nothing short of the first down mark. See the coaches at the top of your screen, boy, they all have their hands on their knees. All kind of bent over like we've got to convert here. Third and five, bad snap. They pick it up and the tackle is made. Boy, how about Smiley? Yeah, Smiley again, because the hole just happened to open up there and I thought they were gonna be able to run for it, didn't you? I mean, watch Are they hole. going? Are they going? It's fourth down and four. I think you have to, Mark. I mean, 10-14 to go. If you punt it back away, you're not gonna get the ball back till your six or seven minutes ago. Your, your punter's hurt. I mean, at this point, if you hold them to a field goal, you're still down two possessions, but uh, at some point in time, you you're down to 14 on the play clock. You better be moving quicker than you're moving. At some point in time, you gotta, you gotta push all your chips in. Six on the play clock. Fourth down and four. They'll bring pressure. Hall throws this one out. Catch wow, is made, it. and he should have it past the sticks. Boy, he caught that one out at the 31. Well, he stuck the stuck the ball out past the 30. Well, they're moving the sticks. Yeah, that's all that matters. This was a low percentage throw. Nice play. Man, what a catch. Xavion James again, a big first down inside handoff. And this has been the bell cow. Well, at this point, you're under 10 minutes to go. Four down territory all over the field. Yeah. By the way, I think we've done two first round games at Ferry. We might have done a third, but if we've only done two, both of them have featured one handed snags by the Admiral, Jacob Warren, a few years ago. Yep. And then, of course, tonight, the one handed interception by Jordan Shepard. Yeah, speaking speaking Shepherd, of Shepard, yeah. Stepped right in front of that one, knocked it away. That was almost a pick six. Uh, what's that? Is they haven't taken any deep shots? They've not. That's what I'm saying. I'd love to see a pump fake and, 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 and try to hit something vertical. I'm with you. The safeties have been fighting on everything, jumping every route. How about a slant and go, a post and go? Making pay for overplay. Third down and eight. Hall, quick drop. Nice coverage by John Duncan. And it's fourth down and eight. It's kind of like going for the two-point conversion. Once you start going for fourth downs, you're going every time. Yep. 
Time they out. all take a timeout. We'll take it with them. Key fourth down when we come back. Jeff County trailing Farragut at 17 7. How about a draw for us? I wouldn't. Well, I would go to the Knoxville Smile Camp right here, brought to you by Doctors Malone, and cost a lot of smiles on the Farragut side as the Admirals are forcing a punt now. A fourth down and eight, we thought. And they'll fake it, and they'll throw out of it. And Farragut ready for that. By the way, the smile came brought to you by KnoxvilleSmiles.com. Just go for it. Like, if you're going to do that, just go for it. That's such a low percentage play. Now the ball's obviously on the road tomorrow, but still some tailgating going on. A lot of people getting together to watch number one and number two, Tennessee and Georgia, number one and number three, however you want to look at it. Uh, Food City, Pepsi, and Frito-Lay teaming up to be your tailgating headquarters. Place that order online at foodcity.com. They will have it ready for you. Yeah, I don't understand. You kind of outthink yourself just a little bit. I mean, the, the, even if he'd caught it, he was going to be four yards short. Oh, Luke pressure. Johnson getting some pressure and throws this one out, and uh, Gibbs can't catch it. By the way, that central uh, game, they're now tied at 14. Yeah, I noticed Chad hadn't been anywhere to be found. He's watching the game on NFHS. Yeah, Zach Nelson, the voice of the Central Bobcats, uh, calling that. He's really not. He's really just the voice of wherever John tells him to go. <laughs> <laughs> the Heritage, <laughs> Central. This is true. Incomplete pass, stop the clock. And so with that said, they'll uh, hand off inside to Elijah Gibbs and his <laughs> taken down quick. Well, I thought for a second. <laughs> He had something working, but Emmett Newman closed that hole in a hurry. Jeff County got that big rotation of the D lineman, and it, 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 it's proven to be really, really good all year long. I mean, defensively, you know, look at Jeff County tonight. They've held up. I mean, they've had their, you know, backs up against the wall most of the second, third, and fourth quarter. Here they only give up 17 points. Yeah, four sacks, seven tackles for loss. They'll bring pressure again. And how about the sliding catch by Davila at the 19, gain of 11 on a third down and eight. Luke Johnson felt the pressure, threw it a little behind Davila, who makes a sliding great catch. Yeah, Jeff Kenny was in perfect position. Just fits it into a tight window, moves the chains, and Farragut has a chance to... Put Jeff County away here with a touchdown. 
They can hang around, they'll hold them to three. High snap, Gibbs around right end. Down to the 15, gain of four. You leaving for Georgia right after the game? Yep. That I am. How many times have you been to Sanford Stadium? A bunch? Uh, I think it was until four. That would constitute a bunch. You going to bring home a win? <laughs> we'll see. I think he has got to just avoid the, the slow start and let Georgia get in, into some momentum early. Nice job by Johnson to fake, spin, keep the legs churning. He's still not down, still pulling forward, and finally down at the five-yard line. But a fumble, and oh, Jeff, Jeff County's got it. Jeff County absolutely just robbed him because that was Dallas Williamson as Johnson was trying to get to the ground, and Williamson said, we've got to have that football now, and he just took it away. Just when you thought, Fair gets about to put Jeff County away, Jeff County... Watch Williamson. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Boy, forward progress had, it was stopped. I agree, but I mean, it is what it is. Central scores a touchdown with 43 seconds to go. Frank Johnson, the fourth. Bobcats up 21 14. Out of his end zone, looking to throw. And a gain of a couple of yards. To Bryson let him. You gotta take some shots downfield. You, you, you gotta send James deep. Yeah, this Dean can dunk. Yeah, Eric Kane was down. in position to make that tackle. <laughs> you know I wasn't gonna make the catch, so <laughs> I saw you. Yeah, you're ready to form tackle. Let's take a quick break and a break. When it comes to the game of football, teamwork is critical for success. When it comes to customer service and business, that team approach is just as critical. That's why we're such believers in our friends at Exterior Home Solutions. We have seen firsthand how Exterior Home Solutions has supported our community and treats their customers just like family. So when it comes to roofing, siding, or maybe a complete overhaul, please make Exterior Home Solutions your first and only call. Okay. Uh, second down and eight, uh, the uh, young man is up. Okay, so updated scores here. Uh, still 7-6, six, Dobbins. Still 7-6. Six. Bearden over Dobbins. Everything Bennett. else has kind of went chalk at this point. Looks like uh, Central will hold on. That means they'll go to Boone next week. Okay. Boone, Boone's going to win over one run away from Halls there late in that game. Um, Barnes Walker Valley still 14-7. Walker Valley in the third. That's right. It'll be Morristown West and Knox West next week. Hall rolls right and air mills this one. To the tuba player, no, the uh, SRO. The third down in seven. Going to the fourth quarter, Walker Valley 14, Parn seven. Walker Valley has uh, bottled up to Sean Bishop tonight. It's 14 to seven in the first quarter. Yeah. Third down and seven. Hall looking to throw. Here's the shot. Going to throw this one deep. And they're looking for and the flag, and they got it. Bearden extends the lead over Dobbins Bennett to 14-6. Winner of that goes to Marable. Bass interference will be a 15-yard penalty. Not a spot foul in high school football or college. Everybody ran up there like, hey, it's our Pass ball up at the 40. Defense number 18, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. So at this point, we've watched Jeff County for almost eight quarters. They've scored a combined 13 points. <laughs> You've been bad luck. Patriots have two timeouts left. Start watching that clock here at the 24 yard line. If you can score a touchdown, cut it to 17 to 14, you get a couple of couple of timeouts left. Gotta go quick. And this one almost intercepted. They're just absolutely overplaying the quick passing game. 
I agree. I don't know why they didn't hit the out and up. Uh, Fear get, should have like five or six interceptions tonight. They have dropped pick after pick. Again, they, they've let Jeff Kenny hang around. I'm not sure Jeff Kenny's going to be able to do anything with him. But. Yeah, I mean, as soon as they run a stop and go or an out and up. That's Craig Kismet over there. It'll pop wide open. And Hall will take a shot deep. And they're looking for a there flag again, and they'll get it. Yeah, because he held. I mean, that was a good call. Flag on John Duncan, 15 yards will move it up to the 39. Pass interference, defense number three, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. That's the eighth Farragut penalty of the night, 81 yards. The locker room connected by Iris Networks. What are we talking about Sunday night? 10:35 on CW. Hall under duress. Eric Kane. We have talked about throwing the football downfield. They've had success in an interesting way. Yeah, I mean, the last two times they've thrown it down the field here recently, they picked up two flags, and I thought about that early on in the second half. I'm just like, just take a chance to, to pick up a first down on third and long. Second down and 15. Oh, and there's another one. I mean, overplaying that again. I don't know why you keep running that. You keep running the intermediate stuff, and Fair gets overplayed it all night long. You keep throwing it. You do, and now it'll be third down 15. Of course, it's four down territory, so I mean, it is what it is. You don't have to get it all right here, but again. As I'm soon as you pump fake the out. Well, that's when they're holding, because they do get beat. Every time they went up top. Well, I keep taking 15-yard penalties I, I all would, the way down the I would, field. I would try something down the middle of the field here. They've worked the sideline over and over and over. Hall looks to throw. Has time. Running out of time. Can run, and he will. And on a third and 15, he will pick up about five yards and bring up a fourth down and 10. Five thirty-six to go. And Spencer Riley's team may be down to their, their last shot right here on a fourth down. Got to throw it past the sticks. Fourth and eleven. Isaiah Hall's got to know that too. He's got to know I can't throw this short. I got to throw it to sticks. midfield. He's got to get to midfield. Yes. Throw it to the star. Fourth and 11, Farragut bringing pressure. Hall rolling, looking, got to throw it. He will Short of contact the sticks. from behind, and there is no flag this time. Short of the sticks. Eh? That commercial bank salutes the stripes, and tonight the salute is our referee. Scott Farrell, 19th season officiating. He's a transportation director, and uh, uh, thanks to him and all the folks who wear the stripes on Thursdays and Friday nights, making sure these kids have a game to play. So 5.28 to go. Was that it? It's it. It's over. Can't score two touchdowns in 5.28. You can, but not the way. Jeff Kennedy's not showing enough of a pulse to do that. And this time Johnson will keep it slides down. I mean, Farragut's going to run off at least two minutes here. You know, one thing they tell you don't do if you're on air is tell people, you can go ahead and turn the channel. Austin just said, eh, you know, the Andy Griffith show that's on tonight, black and white, and Barney's getting into it with Goober. No. Mr. McBeavy, he's up in the trees. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Inside, handoff. 
Well, he gives his quick, is he not? Inside the 25. Well, if you have any signage needs, real estate, whatever it may be, give in and uh, AP at uh, One Day Signs and Banners a call. 865-525-5474. Final scores tonight, Greenville 45, Fulton 6, Elizabeth in 49, Carter 7. Boone up on Halls, 37 to seven. Rockwood season comes to a close at South Green, 34-16. Another tackle for loss at the eighth one of the night. Uh, Pigeon Forge over West Green. West Green, by the way, was eight and two coming in, 48 nothing. Says a lot about that region. That's pretty standard, though. The four seed in that Alcoa region normally has success. Timeout taken here. We'll take it with them. Football is back. And OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting your misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense. Call OAB Law and turn your wreck into a check. 17-7 Farragut, 4.06 to go. Second of our two E2 Sports Scholar athletes of the game, Omar Salim, a senior, pick number 76. 4.1 GPA brought to you by the official apparel provider of uh, Playoff Friday, that being E2 Sports, and the Commercial Bank Rivalry Showcase. Go to myE2Sports.com, and as I told you earlier, they got uh, big news to report there. They are now uh, carrying Riddell youth helmets for youth leagues, middle schools. Give them a shout. Speak to the experienced sales team. And uh, if you're let down by your current apparel provider, make sure that you give uh, E2 Sports a call for superior service. Joe McNish points in his hat, embroidered by E2 Sports, and says, mm hmm, superior service. Luke Johnson looking to throw, feels some pressure. Catch is made on a second down and 17, and out of bounds is DeVault. If I'm Jeff Cantor, if I'm very good, I'm just trying to hand off and get out. That was surprising. Like, I, it, no offense, but like, the, the, Luke Johnson's a really good quarterback, and, and he's taking some shots in the second half. You, you need him next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I. It's one of those things where I just feel like, you know, just, just get out of here. Just, just hand it off. Let's get out of here. Let's keep our quarterback upright. Winner of this is going to go to Science Hill as uh, Science Hill is up on Bradley 28 to 14. Flag comes in here. So as of right now, looks like Farragut Science Hill. All right, right snap. False back. start. Offense. Oh, Number 60. Five guard penalty. Still third down. As of now, it looks like, uh, well, we know it's Elizabeth and at Anderson County in what was a 35-34 game. Uh, looks like Bearden, if they hold on against Dobbins Bennett, would go to Maryville. That's 14 to six, six minutes to go fourth quarter. Third down and 11, they'll feel some pressure. Another big hit. Can you imagine if on that hit, if they, if they picked it off and returned it for yeah. a pick six? It was close. He'd been beaten and battered in the second half. Fourth down and 11. I mean, I, I mean, Eric, I, I know you agree with me. Just get out of here. <laughs> like, this game's over as long as you just keep the clock running. Yeah, no doubt. Just get out of here. There's no reason to take in a, an injury this late in the game and a game that you have. I'll tell you what, Austin, this Jeff County front seven, this defensive line has gotten good. after it tonight. They've yeah, been they great. Have. I mean, it's, it's really a spoiled effort, to be honest. 42-yard field goal from the right hash. Keeney's kick is up, and it is no good. Well, our young guy, Dustin Heblenick, Hope I said that right. Of D H I L photos, a Farragut grad, and he started a business. And uh, boy, he got some great shots tonight. You can see all those shots on all of our games this year and other games as well. At D H I L dot photos, a lot of great shots tonight. We're there. We go now to the football game. Look at that one-handed grab right there. Great shot. 
Oh. D-H-I-L dot photos. 3.53 to go. You're still not out of it. No, I mean, technically you're not. You just got to have to have, have a busted play, though. I mean, they, they dink and dunk, and it's you have to throw it vertically. Hall steps up, cuts back inside, and goes down at the 24-yard line. That's what Ferry oh, wants. Clock's running. Now they're going to come all the way back down the field while those receivers are 30 or 40 yards down the field. They got one timeout left if you're Jeff County. Twin receivers both sides. I still keep waiting for the out and up with a stop and go. We'll throw a short one out to the near side. Cutting back inside. They'll get the first down out to the 38-yard line. That'll stop the clock for James. All looking to throw, dancing around, and we'll just throw this one out of bounds in the area of uh, Benson Scott of KOC. Who wouldn't have caught it if it was thrown right to him anyway? Would be interesting to see Jeff Kenny score here and just get an onside kick. Second down and 10. They're going to have to throw the football downfield. All has time rolling. All right, there's a nice one. Down the sideline and out of bounds goes McGall. Not over yet. Well, and again, the reason that it's not over, and I proclaimed it was over a few minutes ago, but the reason it's not over, Bear can throw in the football. Yeah, stopping the clock. Giving Jeff County some time. 27 yard hookup to Zach McGaw, a senior. And Hall will look to throw again. And there's the out and up. And if he had thrown that one on the field to play it. I think was, I think he went out of bounds anyway. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, well, they finally ran the up. No. We've been calling for it for two hours now. Second and ten. Pressure up the middle. Hall will throw this one and nice coverage. Third down and ten. Comes up hobbling. Two forty-seven to go. Jeff County with one timeout left. A third down and ten. Farragut has been held scoreless in the second half. Admirals bringing pressure. All sings this one out. Catch is made down to the 20 yard line. That a first down gain of 16 yards. And the Patriots still alive. <laughs> one of the strangest games we've ever done. We're still breathing. <laughs> There's still a pulse. First and 10 at the 21. Hall, all kinds of time. There's this one out for a short gain of four yards to Overton. Tenth play of the drive. 222. Jeff County, I believe, has two timeouts. Hall stands, looks, steps up, 
taken down at the 20. The clock will run, and that's not what you want if you're Jeff County. You got to know to throw that one away. Third and 10. Losing precious time. Third down and 10, under two to go. A lot less ground to cover here for, for Farragut's defense, too. Hall sings it across the middle. Catch should have been made inside the five, right off the hands of Bryson Letterman. And a fourth down coming. You need a field goal. You could try a 38-yarder. Throws it behind the receiver just a bit. Should have made the catch. Third downs tonight. Well, two for three on fourth down. Farragut bringing pressure. Hall across the middle. And the incomplete pass. There are no flags. And Farragut can run this clock out and head off to Science Hill for round two. We have time now for the Joe Newbert collision of the game, and we'll cue that up here in just a second. Luke Johnson looking across the middle, and there is the collision of the game, and that is by Bryson Letterman as Ashton Auker jumps up and says, I caught that one. Be surprised if we see a pass now. I wouldn't even hand the football off. Last timeout taken by Jeff County. He can't stop it again. And for Eddie Courtney, win number 200 of his career. Got that, uh, that little love, satchel briefcase. I love next when he gets the, the satchel. That's my favorite. <laughs> when he won the state title in 2017 or 16, 16 yeah. he had his satchel. And we'll go ahead and get the uh, Iris Connections. Iris Network's connection of the game. And it can really only be one play. I guess it could have been two. Because this wasn't the one I thought it was. The pass to Bryson Letterman for the Irish Network's connection of the game. The only score of the game for Jefferson County. And it was a pretty pitch and catch for the Patriots, but their only touchdown of the night. This Letterman, he's winning all the awards. <laughs> Collision, connection. When Morristown West came all the way back against Sevier County, it was 14 nothing Smoky Bears. Morristown West, 31 straight points. They're now up 31-21. Science Hill up on Bradley, 35-20. Admirals will hand off. The Patriots can't stop the clock. Well, we'll put on our uh, Twitter account, Rivalry so Thursday, crazy. tomorrow morning, where we'll be next week for the second round of the playoffs. Boy, West. Can anybody beat West? No. 56-7 over Crockett. They get to score 100 points and six or seven of the games this year. Do you realize that the I think Central Central scored on their opening drive against West a field goal? That was the only points they gave up in region play all year. They outscored their region opponents like 233 to three or something like that. By the way, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get a look on your face because we talked about it. In the Andy White Sports Network, Karn scores with two and a half minutes to go at Walker Valley, game tied at 14, two and a half to go. Why do I have a feeling that one's going to overtime? Yeah, the final score tonight, Farragut advances on. They will travel over to Science Hill to take on the Hilltoppers. 17-7, to 7, the final score this evening. 
Jefferson County finishes their season at seven and four. The Admirals improved to nine and two, but most importantly for that guy, Eddie Courtney gets win number 200 on his career. Great respect between Eddie Courtney and Spencer Riley as the former Vol congratulates Coach Courtney on his 200th win. Pilots High School Heroes, the fifth quarter, when we come back as the Admirals advance. Blue 2020 F-150 41990. Hut! Jake drops back. He's got a deal wide open. The crowd goes wild with savings. Whether you're looking for a low mileage pre-owned truck to tailgate in or a minivan to get the whole family to the game, the pre-owned patrol has what you're looking for. Only at Ted Russell Ford on Kingston Pike or Parkside Drive. I'm the owner of Top Flight Athletics in Kingston. Hi, I'm Rob Black, Athletic Director at Fulton High School. When it comes to apparel and uniforms for our girls, um, quality and efficiency are most important. So I've got a lot of cheer moms to deal with. When we think of apparel and equipment vendors, you know, we're thinking about people who we can trust and people that we have a relationship with and uh, some, someone that will make sure we get what we want when we want it and it'll look the way that we uh, designed it. That and the fact that they are locally owned is the reason that we do business with E2 Sports. E2 Sports has been that for us and that's who we're, we're in partnership with right now and couldn't be more proud to do so. Safety. Integrity. Reliability. More people trust the Joe Newbert family to return their vehicle back to its original condition or better. Only Joe Newbert Collision Centers offer pickup and delivery, worry-free insurance claim handling, and guaranteed repairs for as long as you own your vehicle. Insist on locally owned Joe Newbert Collision Centers. And drive safely out there. At town now for Pilots High School Heroes, the fifth quarter. Congratulations to Eddie Courtney as he collects win number 200 with the athletic director, Don Dodgen, right behind him. And let's head down for our Exterior Home Solutions six-star MVP, Elijah Gibbs, checking out the helmet. He's gotten a varsity all-access player of the week. Now he's got a player of the game. 23 carries, 82 yards. That's the second week in a row, by the way. We had him last week. He was wearing a crown, no crown, but the Exterior Home Solutions uh, hat. Hey, first of all, congrats on the win, a playoff win. Those are always good. How are you feeling right now? How's the team on the sideline after that big win? I mean, they're pretty excited. You know, we got Science Hill next week. Uh, we just got to get ready to go on the road and play them again. They're a pretty good team. Bradley Central is pretty good, but they knocked them off. But I feel like overall we're the better team. 82 <laughs> yards on the ground. <laughs> they're laughing. 82 overall, yards on the ground. You had a reception as well. How do you feel like you ran the football tonight? I feel like, well, I had a little ankle injury like the last couple games. I feel like I ran the football pretty good today. Uh, my catching was a little off, so I don't know what's wrong with me. But other than that, I feel like I, I played like pretty Had a touchdown on the ground. Kind of walk me through that play. What did you see? Well, I saw the whole close. I saw a whole lot outside, and my dad usually tells me, you know, run where they ain't. So, you know, just use the speed, speed kills, get a touchdown. You just won a playoff game. I know you've won a couple in your career, but, you know, how excited are you? What's this feeling like? Great. It's a great feeling. Like, knowing that there are less people, like, playing football, like, at all right now. Like, like some people just are their final, like, this is their, like, their last dance, per se. Like, and it feels great, you know, because last year we got shut down about third round. But this year I want to leave my mark and uh, get a little state. Congrats, man. Best of luck uh, next week, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Guys, our Exterior Home Solutions six-star MVP of the game, Elijah Gibbs. Yeah, Gibbs has had a, uh, a nice uh, season. By the way, he'll be in the rivalry uh, showcase as well uh, as running back for Knoxville. Excited to see that kid play in that event. Yeah, it'll be a, a chance to showcase himself. And, again, I, I think running backs always have a better chance in those games than the receivers just because quarterbacks receivers have to have that kind of 
camaraderie. You just hand the ball and say, here, run through the hole. Well, one of the uh, the great uh, teams that we've talked about is over at West. As the Rebels still undefeated, they get a 56-7 to win tonight. And Austin had a chance to visit one of their key players on the offensive line for the Rebels. Here at West with offensive lineman Jackson Lewis. West continues that upward arc. Jackson had some big wins in recent years. Uh, obviously, season did not finish last year the way y'all hoped. High hopes this year, though. What do you like about this team? Uh, you know, we're returning a lot of guys. Um, it's a big thing. Offense, you know, we had last year, I think we had one senior, you know, Mason Adams. This year we got four guys that will be seniors coming back. Uh, I just love, you know, we got a lot of old guys that are ready to lead. And, I mean, this year we just got that energy. You know, we keep, you know, we keep going up and up, playoffs, semifinals. But I think this year I think we all know that we want to stay. I think, you know, that's the goal. We're pretty determined. I'm really liking that. Fresh pause right now. Fresh pause. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Come on, Brad. Hey, hey keep fighting, baby. Keep right. fighting. You're a talkative guy. We just heard it in the clip. You're just constantly chatting, and it's not in a bad way. It's it's encouragement to the younger guys. Yeah. It's 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 you know kind of you know kind of brotherly love to the to the older seniors. Yeah. Where does that come from? Um, it's just I don't know. It's always who I am. Just try to be energetic. You know, uh, offense. You know, we got to have that energy, and that's what I'm trying to bring as kind of an upperclassman. I know that's a role that I can really fill. It's just bringing that energy. You know, connecting with some of the young guys. You know, when I'm on the sideline and they're trying to get their reps in you know I can try and energize them to help them and then also whenever you know the ones are done kind of group everyone up talk through it just get on the same page even on the other side of the ball you know I love to chat with uh, Jemias and my D linemen just like trying to get them motivated trying to kind of just get high energy all around where we're going so we're getting the best reps. You're back home at guard now, how much more comfortable do you feel this year well, being inside? Uh, I feel really comfortable I mean I play tackle most all my career sophomore junior and even freshman I was playing tackle but um guard something I always kind of learned uh sophomore year with COVID and everything I had to play that versus Catholic so it's just something I always learned I was always kind of ready to do and uh you know I know everything I just I feel really comfortable I feel really good just being able to pull around and I feel like I'm really fit for that so I'm really excited what do you feel like you do well as an offensive lineman uh just doing the fundamentals really well because you know when you're five nine you're not the most physically gifted one out there so you really got to learn those fundamentals and build that skill, you know, like in the weight room and just kind of all the fundamentals. Because when you're not, you know, physically gifted, you just got to build your own skill by doing the things right, practicing right. And I think I'm really good at doing stuff like that. So senior year, last go around, how much are you soaking up every practice, every game? Um, you know, you know, I mean, the yeah. clock's ticking. Yeah, it, it feels a lot different. It, you know, it feels like it, it's flown by, and you know, I, it feels like yesterday I was just a freshman in a white jersey. You know, just get my first reps and uh, to be here. I mean, it, it's just a totally different feeling. You know, just on my last ride here, I'm just I'm ready and I'm excited. But you know, it, it's a little sad because you know it's coming to the end. I know state what we want. I know state what we can get. So I'm really excited. All right, he's ready to soak it in and soak it in with a bunch of wins. Jackson Lewis here at West. Well, next week, OEB Playoff Friday, presented by Pilot Company. Where will we be? Well, we don't know. We haven't talked about it yet. Uh, but we'll be somewhere next Friday night, 7 o'clock, right here on my VLT and RivalryThursday.com. Congratulations, Farragut Admirals, a 17-7 win. Headed up I-81 over to Science Hill next week for a second-round matchup. We'll see you next week.